Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Clemens Moravian Church on this Reign of Christ Sunday as well as the Sunday before Thanksgiving. If you're visiting with us for the first time, either in person or virtually, we especially give thanks for your presence with us today. You've picked a great day to come visit at Clemens Moravian Church. Today we have a an old-fashioned Moravian love feast. I'll talk more about that in a minute. But here at Clemens Moravian Church, we believe that God has and is doing something special with our family of friends as we continue to seek God's face, made even more significant by your presence with us today. I'm going to encourage you that, as time permits, that you look through your bulletin and see all the wonderful activities that uh, are happening here at the church. We are in the midst of a joyful season with Thanksgiving right around the corner, and then next Sunday, the first Sunday in Advent, all very special spiritual opportunities within the life of the community of faith. I also um, have several announcements today from Sister Kay Burke and Sister Lisa Kirkman. So Kay, I'm gonna ask you that you come forward uh, now, please. Good morning. I can't believe it's time to talk about this again, but it's time for the Christmas treasure sale. This will be our 14th sale. It's going to be Saturday, December the 3rd from 8 to 12. We ask that you bring your donations. In case you don't know, the Christmas treasure sale is gently used items that you no longer want, but somebody else might want. We'll take your donations Tuesday the 29th through Friday the 2nd from 3.30 to 7. But we also need help on Monday the 28th moving stuff from the building down here up to the fellowship hall. We need muscles and trucks and big vehicles. So if you'd like to help, we'd be delighted to see you. Just a little history. The first sale made $751. Last year we made $3,692. So we are growing and progressing and we give a lot, a lot of this money to the Clemens Food Pantry. So come out, help us, support us. You're welcome all that week to come and help price and sort and play in the stuff. We'd be glad to see you. Thank you, happy Thanksgiving. Good morning. Um, in just a few minutes, you are going to see a beautifully and seamlessly executed love feast, at least we hope. And we are looking for some uh, eager people to join our ranks, especially as Christmas is coming up. We um, have just lost a lot of people that were deaners in the past, and we are needing to refill our ranks. So I know it can be intimidating when you think about uh, doing it, when you see us do it, and, and we do it so beautifully and wonderfully, and you think you could never do it, but you can. So um, we're thinking about maybe having a class, maybe after um, a worship one day, maybe have a light lunch, and then allowing you to sort of run through it and just see how easy it is to do. So we are really hoping that some of you will be interested in, uh, in joining our ranks on that. So if you will let Pastor Chris know, um, that would be great. And we hope to see you in black and white soon. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Kay and Lisa. Uh, today is a, a special day. It is uh, when we have our Thanksgiving love feast. For those who have never been part of a love feast, uh, the, the idea comes from the very early church, the apostolic church, where they had a significant uh, gathering of people over a, a simple meal. It's not communion. We're not, it's not a sacrament. It, it, it is a uh, the, the Moravians kind of renewed this practice uh, in the early 1700s of getting together over a simple meal and, and turning that into a worship opportunity. And so uh, at various times throughout the year, festivals in the Moravian church, we, we have love feasts. In a moment or two, uh, the deaners will come out. Deaners, uh, like a German word for servers, They'll come out and they'll uh, deliver to us in person a lightly seasoned Moravian bun. 
and good old uh, Moravian coffee. And I'm going to ask that everybody kind of hold on to those. I know we're hungry, so don't, don't jump the gun. But hold on to your bun and your coffee till everyone's been served, and then we will have a, a blessing, and then we'll, we'll partake together, and the choir will sing, and uh, we'll just uh, allow God to work his special spirit through our hearts as he prepares us for another season of thanksgiving. Let us now turn our hearts and our minds to God in our call to worship today, our call to worship simple gifts. <clears throat> Let us now begin our love feast with our opening hymn, Come, You Thankful People, Come. You'll find it in the love feast ode that you were given as you came into the worship center today. So please, if you're able, let us stand and sing together.
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we gather once again today in and around your pure and absolute grace. We know this because our journeys in the world convince us little by little that each step we take without you are perilous at best. Therefore, we do give thanks that we are watched and cared for by you, especially in those moments when we feel the most estranged. As our attention turns to a collective song of thanksgiving today and this week, help us not only remember, but be moved by the knowledge of friends and family and neighbors who will have challenges mustering up feelings of gratitude because of the life circumstance that they face. We believe and ultimately trust that you hear not only our individual groanings, but the collective sighs of a people who often lose their way in the midst of an hour or a day, a week or a month. Lord, do not hide your face from us, but help us shout for joy through each tear, the firm knowledge that you are our shepherd and that we are your sheep, and that is always enough, for you are good and your love and belief in us does remain forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We continue our love feast with the singing of Give to our God immortal praise, mercy and truth are all his ways, wonders of grace to God belong. Repeat his mercies in your son.
Please notice with me now the Moravian blessing and let us ask this blessing together as Christ's body. Come, Lord Jesus, our guest to thee, and bless these gifts bestowed by thee. Bless our loved ones everywhere and keep them in thy loving care. Amen. You now may partake.
and drinking, or are you about done? <laughs> also, I need someone to help me find a, another word besides partake. I don't like saying partake. Dig in or something like that. <laughs> it's now time for our deaners to uh, collect our cups and our napkins, and we usher them back in by singing, we gather together to ask the Lord's blessing. He chastens and hastens. He will to make known the wicked oppressing now cease from distressing. Sing praises to his name. He forgets not his own. So look at, uh, look at the Lord's bounty here. 
folks have brought food. Uh, we deliver this, for some of you who may be asking the question, where does all this go? It's not a prop that we use every year and we put it back in a closet and then, <laughs> and then bring it out at Thanksgiving. No, we, we actually uh, take this to uh, the Clemens Food Pantry. Uh, but I do want to say just a word about whether it's Cle Clemens Food Pantry or Sunnyside Ministry, they have a food pantry. Uh, most of the food pantries in this country have, have run out of uh, federal assistance. That, that, that time is gone, but the need still remains great. And our food pantries are suffering. And so we, we've come with Thanksgiving that we can uh, gather this up and take it to the, the food pantry today. But uh, remember that this season, this season that we're in, that there are people who, who cannot afford to have a meal so if we have the opportunity to give, let us continue to give. As I ask the ushers to come forward as we take up our morning offering. Oh God, help us to always be a thankful people, especially, Lord, in those moments where we lapse in our mind and we get caught up with all the things in our life and the world that distracts us from the real blessings that, that we have and that we have been given. Lord, um, take this food that we're going to be taking to the, uh, the folks that need it this afternoon and, and use it to help nurse their bodies. Take these offerings that people have, have brought to you today as a, as a sign of our faithfulness and our love for you. And thank you once again, Lord, that you allow us to participate in this most uh, important moment of discipleship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> It's now time for our children's church. If we have any young people here, Sister 
Pam Corm is in the back of the church waiting for you, so you may make your way to Pam now. Our text today comes to us from Psalm 100. Hear the word of God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is good. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. According to James Moore, one of the best peanut comic strips is the one that came out a few years ago, just before Thanksgiving. Lucy's feelings was... She was feeling sorry for herself, and she laments, My life is a drag. I'm completely fed up. I've never felt so low in my existence. Her little brother Linus tries to console her, and he says, Lucy, when you're in a mood like this, you should try to think of things you have to be thankful for. In other words, Lucy, just count your blessings. To that, Lucy says, Ha! That's a good one. I count, how could I count my blessings on one finger? I've never had anything and I never will have anything. I don't get half the breaks that other people do. Nothing ever goes right for me. And you talk about counting blessings? Are you serious? You talk about being thankful? Hmm. What do I have to be thankful for? And then Linus looks at her as only Linus can and he says, well... For one thing, you have a little brother who loves you. With that, Lucy runs and hugs her little brother Linus as she cries tears of joy. And while she's hugging him tightly, Linus says, every now and then I do say the right thing. (laughs) Brothers and sisters in Christ, When is the last time you felt a deep sense of appreciation? A deep sense of appreciation, of gratitude, of thanksgiving. If it's been a while, if it's been a while, what may be stealing our opportunities to say thanks? In his book, A Long Obedience in the Same Direction by Eugene Peterson, he describes the stereotypical type that many Christians never crack a smile and are folks who never really have fun. Folks think of us that way sometimes. And therefore, they often act anything but joyful. Have you ever known someone like that? They go to church every Sunday. They are part of the... Bible studies, they work in all the fellowship opportunities, but they just look sad or angry. Peterson, however, goes on to say that this is one of the biggest lies ever created, presumably by the evil one, and that it is simply not true. This sense of joyful appreciation is not a requirement of being a Christian, but it is certainly and can be a consequence of being a person of faith. And this consequence, really, it gets supercharged into uh, our reality by finding ways to be thankful even when we are in the midst of incredible pain, loneliness, dysfunction, tears of life and circumstance that catch us off guard and, and jumble our equilibrium, left unattended, often develop into withdrawn behavior and aggressive attitudes often hurting not only ourselves but the people we love the most in this world. 
The stark reality is that being able to turn to the anchor of thanksgiving, especially when the storm is raging in and around us, can be difficult and a far-off platitude often spoken by folks who just don't really understand the trouble that we are in. In fact, and there's people here today, there's people here that are watching us on the internet, all around us, this Thanksgiving and this Christmas will be the toughest one they've ever experienced in their life for a whole host of reasons. It can be hard, really hard. Yet we must not give in to our circumstance and, and think that we're bad people or, or bad people of faith just because we don't always feel joyful. Rather, we come to God and to the revelation of God's ways because none of us have it within ourselves except momentarily to be joyfully thankful. We don't. It is, it is life working together harmoniously. It's exuberance. We cannot make ourselves thankful. Thanksgiving cannot be commanded. It can't, it can't be uh, replicated, purchased, or arranged. It must be received. Received. This is why the book of Psalms, located in the, the, the very center of God's word, has such relevance and importance for us today. Like the one I just read, Psalm 100. They prove that even in the midst of our darkest moments, even in the midst of God's people's darkest moments, depending on God, believing in God, it finds a way. It finds a way. And, and, and the Psalms, like the one that I just read, they often begin with this idea of shouting with joy. And I don't know about you, sometimes when I read them, I go, what in the world are they so happy about? Because they have been to the bottom and experienced the worst of the challenges of life. And yet they received. And when they received, they made it on to the other side of their pain. They made it on to the other side of their dysfunction. Peterson goes on to, si goes on to say that we have a choice. We can decide to live in response to the abundance of God and not under the dictatorship of our own, own needs. And that's really what it boils down to. In those moments, do we dare turn our attention in a different direction? We can decide to center ourselves in the God who generously gives and not in our own egos. We can. But it takes Trust, trust that the God that spins the universe will come to our rescue. In our deepest need. There's a, a story about a missionary in Africa who was preaching his first sermon in a mission church that had been started there. When time came for the offering, the people danced their offerings forward. <laughs> Can you imagine Alex and Ed? <laughs> I mean, just sit with this picture for just a moment. In fact, pick any, pick any of our ushers and think of them dancing forward. <laughs> I 
They danced their offerings forward. They danced and they sang praise to God as they brought their offerings to this altar. It's a beautiful moment, he said. It was a beautiful moment. After the service, he asked one of the people there, why do you dance and sing when you bring your offering forward on Sunday mornings? Back came the answer, how could we not? How could we not? We're so grateful to God for what he has done for us in sending Jesus Christ to save us. We have to dance. We have to sing. We have to sing our thanksgiving. And besides, it says in the Bible, God loves a cheerful, cheerful giver. It does. Do you feel gratitude that strongly in your life today? Gratitude, thanksgiving, is the spirit of your lifestyle when you make the choice to be thankful. People of faith, of deep faith, they just can't help it because they recognize the gift above everything else that they have been given. I'm doing something a little different today. I, I, I wanted to just say a few words to you about Thanksgiving, but I wanted us to, to as a, a corporate body of believers gathered together, pray, <laughs> pray together our Thanksgiving liturgy as really the message this morning. So I've asked Brother Scott Stewart to lead us in our Thanksgiving liturgy. It's found in the Blue Hymn Book in your pews on page 159. And brothers and sisters, as, a, as an expression of our thanks, but not only an expression, but as a preparation for the days ahead, let us stand and sing and pray together our liturgy of thanksgiving. Almighty and gracious God, you have made yourself known to us in a multitude of ways, and each of those ways invites us to respond to you with grateful hearts. You created in us your own image and redeemed us with your love and have always sustained us with your grace. Jesus Christ for entering into our human flesh and taking the form of a servant. We praise and honor you with our hearts and our lives because we know we could not help ourselves or earn our own salvation.
You have not left us to live alone in this world, but have called us to be members of your body, the church. We thank you for all those in the past who have shared their faith with us and for those in the present who helped to shape our response to your love. We are grateful. You have not left us without written and living testimony to your involvement in human history. We thank you for the holy scriptures and the insights they provide for us in our mission and ministry. For the creation itself and the nourishment we receive from its resources, for seed time and harvest, sunshine and rain, oceans and forests, for the wondrous way in which we are woven into the environment. For all the creative things we are enabled to do through the gifts and talents you have given to us, for the good health within our bodies, minds and spirits, for the courage and healing that you provide when we are broken and discouraged in the midst of our earthly pilgrimage. For the gift of time and the guidance you give for the redemptive use of our days, for the satisfaction and renewal that come from our labor and leisure, for directing us to do justice and to love mercy, for the chance to begin again whenever we falter and fail. Hear now, gracious God, our words of contrition that we pray in the light of your manifold blessings. We confess that we have failed to perceive your glory as it is revealed in the creation. We have taken the gifts of this world and have not sought tomorrow with the blood of the Lord before us. Forgive us for our shameful life.
God hears our prayers, blots out our transgressions, and creates a new and right spirit within us. Go in peace and joyful service. A lot of praying and a lot of singing today, and that's good. I'm not going to ask you to sit back down, but I am going to ask you that we sing in our, our bulletin, Now Thank We All Our God is our benediction. That will be our benediction for, day, for today. Now Thank We All Our God with heart and hand and voices. Let us sing. Go and serve the Lord.